Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a comedy and sci-fi movie from 2006 called Idiocracy. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. At the start of the movie, the narrator points out that natural selection doesn't care about intelligence. This suggests that less intelligent people may have more children than smarter ones in a society where knowledge isn't valued. As a result, those less likely to contribute to societal progress become the majority. The film highlights the issue of widespread stupidity rather than governmental tyranny. It focuses on an army librarian who is unqualified for his role and comes to understand how society could fall apart due to this mediocrity. In 2005, army librarian Joe Bowers was chosen for a new mission because he was the most average person in the military. As explained by Officer Collins, Sergeant Keller picks him as the first participant in their human hibernation experiment, which is designed to freeze people for the Army's long-term use. Since there are no suitable female participants, they recruit a prostitute named Rita by bribing her pimp, Upgrade. On the experiment day, Joe and Rita are placed on separate beds with tubes attached to their bodies. Officer Collins tells them they will be asleep for a year, which frightens Rita. Joe reassures her that all will be well, and the experiment begins. They are then sealed in a top-secret facility. Later, Officer Collins is caught up in a scandal involving illegal activities with Upgrade and gets arrested. With Collins gone, the experiment is forgotten, the facility is destroyed, and Joe and Rita end up in a landfill, still unconscious. Over the next centuries, the smartest people stop having children, while those of lower intelligence reproduce more freely. This leads to increasingly less intelligent future generations. During a trash landslide, Joe's bed slides into the city and he wakes up. He finds himself in Frito's apartment, but Frito gets annoyed by his questions and kicks him out. Joe is baffled by the drastically different surroundings and the people who have significantly changed. The former Washington, D.C. has become a capitalist nightmare where even fashion and self-presentation are heavily influenced by deep-rooted capitalism. Additionally, Joe is mocked for his way of speaking, as language has become more about advertising than communication, much like how social media today serves more for ads than for connecting people. Essentially, we've become carriers of commercial messages. The visual and spoken aspects of these scenes reveal how much societal progress has regressed. Unsure of the year, Joe walks the streets looking for help, but faces a language barrier since even English has degraded into simpler forms. Desperately needing assistance, Joe visits a hospital but finds no help there. Although technology has advanced, it often fails and is overly commercialized. The healthcare staff, appearing less educated, treat patients poorly. While waiting for a doctor, Joe spots a magazine that shows it's the year 2505. Dr. Lexus arrives, smoking in his office, and proves unhelpful. He charges Joe, who cannot pay because he lacks the necessary barcode tattoo. Looking out the window, Joe realizes he's been asleep for over 500 years as the world has decayed. Unable to settle his hospital bill, Dr. Lexus calls the police on Joe, who gets arrested before he can explain his situation. The next day in court, Joe faces trial with Frito as his lawyer. The courtroom lacks any formal procedure, and rather than defending him, Frito suggests Joe should be imprisoned. Consequently, Joe's fate is swiftly decided without a proper defense. Meanwhile, Rita also escapes her chamber. She tries to reach Upgrade but fails. Unaware of the current year, unlike Joe, Rita resumes her job as a prostitute. She finds that people have become so simple-minded that she can make money without providing typical services. Throughout the movie, Rita is often worried about her finances. She frequently mentions Upgrade out of fear of being charged for the money she owes. However, she is also relieved by how easy it is to get money in the future. In 2005, Joe and Rita were very different, but Rita seemed to be doing well in this new society despite her low-income background. Work as it was known no longer matters much in this world. Although jobs exist, the work is subpar and the workers are largely incompetent, affecting many sectors like business, justice, and healthcare. Another significant moment is Joe's unjust imprisonment. On his way to prison, a malfunctioning speech recognition machine renames Joe to not sure when processing his barcode tattoo. He then takes a simple IQ test with other inmates, discovering he's the smartest among them. On the journey to prison, Joe convinces a guard that he should be released, and the guard, without questioning further, sets him free. Joe has nowhere else to go, so he returns to Frito's apartment to seek help. Frito tells him about a time machine that could send him back to 2005, but it's expensive. 
Joe convinces Frito to help him by promising wealth through compound interest on a bank account he will set up in the 21st century. The lawyer agrees and they escape the apartment just as the police begin to chase them. On their way, Joe finds Rita who is shocked to see him again. Joe tells her it's the year 2505 and they have been in hibernation for 500 years. Rita struggles to believe this, especially as the police close in. Rita finally understands everything once Joe explains. Previously, it was unthinkable for Rita to earn money so quickly. She begins to see it as an opportunity. The irony of Joe, an average man, being the smartest in the future highlights his humility and self-awareness. Despite being recognized as the most intelligent, Joe doesn't seek fame. He is determined to return to the past. Unfortunately, Frito's car breaks down, forcing them to run. Frito leads them to a huge Costco, part of their journey to the time machine. While waiting for a train, Rita goes to the restroom. Joe is identified by a tattoo scanner and arrested for violating the law, choosing to stay and wait for Rita. As he is taken away, Rita hides in the store, uncertain of the outcome. To Joe's surprise, the police take him to the White House after he catches the cabinet's attention for having the highest IQ. There, he meets various government officials and President Camacho, who immediately makes Joe the Secretary of Interior. The president tells the public that Joe will solve severe problems like food shortages and the failing economy within a week. During his first meeting with the cabinet members, Joe discusses the crop shortage. Before proposing a solution, he insists on speaking with Frito and Rita, which the cabinet arranges quickly. Joe then learns that the people don't know what water is. They only drink a product called Brondo, similar to an energy drink. As the new secretary, Joe orders that all crops be watered, promising that this will help them grow. The film critiques America's corporate dominance, showing how corporations control essential resources which limits access to water and natural resources, leading to unhealthy lifestyles and promoting capitalist tendencies. Now back together, Joe and Rita bond over how strange it is to feel smarter than everyone else. Joe is hopeful that his plan will revive the crops. However, when the stock of Brondo Corporation crashes, it causes massive unemployment and no improvement in the crops, leading to riots. Joe is blamed and sentenced to a public demolition derby called Monday Night Rehabilitation where he must compete in a broken vehicle against a much larger one, giving him little chance of survival. While watching the event on TV, Rita sees that crops have started growing in the fields. She and Frito rush to the venue. Rita tries to speak to President Camacho, but he is too caught up in the event. Meanwhile, Joe manages to survive by causing two larger trucks to crash into each other. He also has to face Beef Supreme, a notorious criminal. Rita manages to bribe a cameraman to show the blossoming crops in the broadcast, which is then shown on the stadium's large screens. The crowd is amazed to see the crops and they finally believe Joe. Just as Joe is about to be attacked with a flamethrower, President Camacho sees the thriving crops and pardons him. In this society, government decisions are based on self-interest and popularity rather than the public good. After the event, Rita and Joe decide to stay in the future where they now feel they belong. Joe eventually succeeds Camacho as president and marries Rita, who becomes the first lady. Together, they lead the nation and start a family, as Joe hopes to restore greatness to society. The movie stands out as a comedy that also teaches important lessons, emphasizing the importance of valuing science, knowledge, and research to avoid creating a dysfunctional society. Joe reveals the flaws in the government and works to improve it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.